Hey, hey, welcome to Real Talk with Mr. Richard, a video podcast sponsored by 360 Dance Festival. Welcome back, listeners. We're picking up with the second part of our conversation with Justin and Anthony. They are the owners of the New Dance Teacher Network and Fusion Dance, Solana Beach. Enjoy. So one of the things that uh, you touched on earlier was the adjustment to virtual. Um, Do you guys have any plans for uh, continuing to include virtual as a part of your programming uh, moving forward? A hundred percent. Um, it is, I mean, now I feel like it's a necessity, you know, we have, um, we have a, most of our, most of our clientele are ready to, you know, get back in the studio and they want to be in the space. And that's, you know, that's, um, that's obvious. That's, you know, it's, it's like, it's like adults in their activities. Like you, you don't want to do a home gym from your living room. It's not fun anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's it was like, fun for a week. And yeah. That was about it. <laughs> yeah. So um, a lot of our clientele are ready to come back in, but what's uh, most important, we have, we have clientele that have um, compromised immune systems. So I, perfect thing to do is keep them online. We're mm-hmm. actually, we're able to open in California, we're able to open um, at the moment for privates. Um, and then we're just opened camps and having in-studio sessions, but um, we definitely are, we're still doing privates on Zoom right now and we will be throughout the summer. Um, and then also carrying into the fall, we're gonna, we're gonna work out programs with um, keeping these options open to families because this is, um, unfortunately, I feel like that was something that was off of our radar until this happened, you know, and it really opens your eyes and you're like, wow, the needs of these families. And it's not maybe not necessarily the, the child, it's the child's brother or, yeah. or you know, the, the dancer's brother or it's the dancer's brother's cousin that might come over or, you know, there's all these variables that we kind of just took for granted. You're like, yeah, you get in the room. It's like going to school, go in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go go home and. Um, but all the cross contamination of everything just um, it's it's very eye opening. And so, you still try to please everybody. So, so, so if you're not comfortable to come to the studio, you can stay at home. Or if you just want to come every other week, you can do that. Or if yeah. you want to do pre recorded classes, you can do that. So we don't want we don't want the, the kids and the parents feel pressure. They have to go back or they have to stay online. So I think we're gonna try to mm-hmm. offer like different different. Um, online version, we pre-record it or at the studio and see what parents want. Yeah, and mostly just to keep the kids dancing, dancing you know, yeah, like yeah. the end of the day, like that's that's what we're here for, you know. Well, and that's um, uh, it, it's so interesting that you that that you say that it was off the radar before, and dance is one of the few like one of the few arts where technology has existed and we just we're like oh okay well we'll use the computer to place an order or we'll we'll go on amazon and we'll find this headband or you know we'll 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 use it for what it's there for but we're we're not using it the way that other arts have used it forever i was like musicians have used technology to reproduce themselves over and over over many 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 times and if we can start to find more ways to to um, diversify what we do without us physically having to do it more, like us physically having to be there to do it, we will be able to open up a revenue source and an exposure that we would never be, would never have had before. Because now you have, you guys will eventually, and, and I was speaking to one of the, the, um, the studio software companies and I had said, what if, what if it was say a five year program and you take the first, these next three years just to accumulate your library. And you just, so say your jazz one, your ballet one, whatever, whatever your, your curriculum is. And you just take these next three years and you just accumulate all of the lessons and the content. And then the next two years, you go through that content and you start to group it together so that there's a, a, a curriculum, so to speak, for the studio. So Fusion has this product that is virtual and essentially could be sold on Amazon if it wanted, if you wanted it to be, because now you have a full year's worth of, of jazz one. So what, what, whatever it needs to be. So what if it was say 
you know, this five-year process that now at the end of this five years, you have a library that you have content that not only goes back as a resource for your teachers, a resource for the kids, uh, it's re... It, it's a uh, essentially a uh, product that you can capitalize on because now fusions fusions dance courses are now available for purchase and now your parents have the option to purchase the content or they purchase the content and the class or they can purchase the content or the class it, it, they, it just opens up what we already do to a possibility of having so much more that we could come right back into. So it's because um, it, it's something we're already doing. So if you think about the idea of your, your Zoom classes, how could we repurpose those Zoom classes? Because they're already, I mean, they're, it's essentially just content sitting in cyberspace. How can you repurpose that so that you can make money off of something you're already done? Because I guarantee you, Beyonce is not re singing every time we hit play, she's singing it live. <laughs> so, Good analogy. <laughs> So if we can find a way to make that work for our industry, it's going to be like, that's going to be liberating and it's going to open a door for us to be able to do so much more of what we do, because right now we're limited to our physicality, us physically being there. But if you teach a great ballet one that covers one, two, three, and it takes, you know, 16 weeks to get through that great ballet one class, why should why could that not be available to someone else? Because even your ballet one that you offer at Fusion is gonna be different than Studio B's ballet one. It's gonna be different than Studio C's ballet one, but it all covers the same content different ways. So it's kind of like, like shoes. You, we have lots of different shoes and they all serve a different, different purpose. So that one set of shoes is not gonna be the only set of shoes that you wear throughout the year. So if we can start to look at our, our art and our product and our service as repeatable, something that we can repeat or we can repurpose and we can reuse, we will, you know, we will really be able to, to capitalize on a, a market that, that exists. It does exist. I mean, so think about like the, the, a piano course where you can learn to play the piano on your iPad or you learn to play the piano using your iPad and you can learn to play the guitar using your iPad. Why can't we learn to dance Vert, like using computer, it was like we should absolutely be able to to do it. So, I think that it's really going to open up our market to to to, to more to more. Um, yeah, I really and I and I, I hope that it's dancers doing it. I I don't want uh, you know someone else that sees <laughs> a marketing opportunity or, or opportunity to sell something to do it. I want us to be able to do it because we missed our mark with Under Armour. Like we we really missed it. Like. <laughs> wearing lycra for years or compression garments forever and then under armor shows up and now look at it it was like right the dance industry had that technology they were using this practice this technique this no this this proven methodology of how to protect your body but it just was it was only focused on dancers versus being open to movers so if we can look at it that way uh, i think we really have uh, we can go as the, the sky's the limit Limit a hundred percent, yeah. That's actually that gets me ex like excited when you're saying that, and I'm like, my brain's going already. <laughs> so. Yeah, just let the, let those ideas come. You know, put them on a piece of paper. Enjoy your downtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a downtime right there. You say sky is the limit, and that's that's the the first thing we realized with Zoom is. We, we were we having our faculty teach the regular classes and we were like, hey, why don't we just open it? Like we lived in France, in Australia. We we're like, why don't we open the pop-up classes from all around the world? And we did a tango with uh, a couple from Argentina. Yeah. We did a, a stretch class with our, one of our friends in Chicago. And, and suddenly it's like, there's no limit, there's was... no frontier. It's, you can take a dance class from with everyone. Yeah. Right. And so... I excited for where we're going to be in a year from now because you know we were kind of shoved in it like <laughs> there was no warning there was like covid go like either business tanks or we find a solution and yeah. it, we, we, we're going to make it work we, we will make it work so we were kind of forced into it so now that we're we got our feet wet let's see how we can make it work for us because that's um like we really have we have a a, a, a lot to uh to spring from so um yeah. so 
with uh, with your Zoom classes and the Zoom teaching, what um, have you found to be you, you? What do you know now about it that you didn't know at the beginning that would have would help you when you get ready to start back? Like, what 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 do you know? <laughs> <about that? laughs> A lot. <laughs> Um, what do we know now? Let's see. I mean, there was obviously the first part of, uh, like, um, the initial, like, startup of, of it all, like the accounts and whatnot, uh, but, like, all the sound testing and what works for sound and what doesn't work for sound. And when you share your sound, they can't hear your voice. And, you know, all those technical parts of it was a big, um, Learning is it process. trial? Yeah. yeah, it was a big trial period. Um, also, it's, uh, you know, as, as teachers, we thrive on the kids energy. Um, we, we like, that's, I mean, it's our life, right? Like we're, we're, everybody's in there together. And then, you know, with zoom, it's one of those. So do you guys got it? And it's like silence and you're like, well, this is, <laughs> you can so, unmute yourself. Huh? So it was, it, it was being, um, it was, I wish I knew the creativity of, how the call and response stuff a little bit faster. It's yeah. a learning process. I always, um, I always use like Misty's jazz hands. Like that was so simple and she did it in like meetings and I was like, okay. And then all of a sudden you're seeing kids go like this. And I was like, there's the energy I needed that simple rather than, can you hear me thumbs up? It was, they went like this, like, I mean, this is only goes so far, you know, like for kids. So it was those little tactics that you're starting to learn that are like pulling the kids in. And um, it also, um, I, I had to learn, like I had to give the kids so much credit for being able to be on Zoom. Um, and I started to notice it more, you know, I would be like, ask a question, then I would unmute them. And I would hear like a dog barking, a brother yelling, a vacuum cleaner, and the kid is focused on the dance class. And I was like, how are they doing this? Like. It is, it is actually incredible what they're able to do. And, and as teachers, you know, we only see this little box and we think they're in like a studio by themselves. <laughs> they're not. They are, life is going on around them, um, which is okay, you know? And, you know, you try to tell them to find uh, a space where they can, you know, be on their own, but hey, it's not, and it, you know, and not everything's gonna be perfect and, and it can't happen that way. So you kind of had to roll with the punches, but um, also be so encouraging to the kids that they were able to do that. Cause I don't think they realized what a big deal that was. And, and I know myself, if I had those 10 things going on, the last thing I might be looking at is the screen. <laughs> like I, I'd be over there, like, you know? Um, so it was, that was the whole interesting, I think that was really, I wish, I wish I knew that, but I guess the learning process of that was super fun and um, interesting. Like, um, but it definitely gave me, it, it really gave me so much respect for those kids and the families of what definitely. they were able to do. Yeah, there's, um, and there's something to be said about being in their home. Um, I, I went to the studio for, for the majority of my Zoom classes. I, I, would, te I would film them in the studio. Um, but there was two times that I did it. I was running a little behind and, and I was panicking. I was trying to get, rush to get to the studio. And I was like, it's a Zoom class. You can do Zoom from anywhere. Go in, set up the camera. So I would sit on the patio and we would start class. I would do uh, do the warm up in, in, in my little yard right here. And they, you know, there's something about the kids understanding that we're human too that helped the process. There, there was a, 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 a some kind of bond that happened that they, I'm now in your home. I've never been to your home before. And now you're in my home. We now share something that we would have never shared in the studio that once we finally get back to the studio is gonna make us in some degree closer because we've, oh, we've yeah. boundaries somewhere that we wouldn't have the opportunity to do anywhere else. So I think that that's really gonna help um, the, the camaraderie. Uh, it's gonna help the morale in the studio. It's gonna, it's gonna help so much. Like th there's just so much that, like you said, you couldn't, you couldn't script. Like uh, all of them have dogs. Well, the dogs have of their own and the dog was never in the shot until they were getting ready to do something and the dog would come in and just kind of lay down right in front of where they're going now now they have to stop yeah. the dog or mom's asking them something She's like mom i'm on zoom yeah <laughs> it, it has been entertaining it has been it has been entertaining but it's true it builds it like does. it does i mean it builds that little bond um 
yeah, not a not even a little bond, a big bond, because that's. Uh, I mean, grow, I, I did a couple classes from home. I did like like you did. I, um, I was able to go into the studio for most of them, but it it kind of breaks down that like you know like you know growing up you have your teacher and they're like here and they're like inhu inhumane to you and they're they're at the studio they don't have a life outside the studio you know they don't yeah. go to the grocery store they are they live in that studio and that's what they do and that's it but like it brought that human um yeah we're all at the end of the day we're all just we're people not just people we're, we're human beings so yeah i kind of i thought that um was a cool the connection and then um it was kind of nice because I, I did some privates when we were able to. And I just remember when I had the students come in, it was actually a little boy and he just walked in and smiling. I'm like, oh, you're like, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I'm just so happy to be in the studio, like looking around like he was just like had the biggest grin on his face I and mean, he'd only been dancing a year. So he was just like, oh, it just feels so good, you know, and then it, it makes I think it makes the it's going to make the kids really appreciate as as it has with a lot of other things besides just dance but it's going to make them really appreciate their time in the studio with their friends with um with their teachers so like you said just building that bond stronger stronger and better it's great um i'm looking forward to seeing how the um how the like i said the morale and how the the level of connection is different once they're all back together. I want I want to see that that spark that because a lot of times the kids don't understand what that thing is. Like they know that something's missing and it's not quite right, but they they can't wait to get back to the way it was. And you know, as a once they're old enough to understand, they they will start to sense that it's that the energy of being around other people and that uh, that idea of oh, I push myself because I saw her do it. And if she can do it, then I can do it. And it's just that little, those little things that you only get in the, in the studio that they will appreciate more. And I'm really looking forward to, to pulling more of that out of them when, they, uh, when they're all allowed to, to be back together. So um, last thing, um, what, uh, what if any of your parents and students or any of the, the members on, uh, on the network are, are, would, are gonna listen to our, our conversation, what um, take home do you want them to have um, just, and it doesn't necessarily have to be about uh, dance, but it has to be uh, just um, what you guys have learned and grown from over the past three months and you hope that your parents and your students and the listeners would take away from our conversation today. Hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. So I, I think um, actually what we've kind of ended on what what these three months of our on pause what it's done to our lives and what it's going to like you said like the bonds and the the, the stronger it's going to make everybody um i think that's that's super important because that's something that can be kind of not thought about and taken for granted but like when you when you sit and think about um you know this the stuff we've gone through with the 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 families and the teachers and all the all the studio owners and our dance community like how strong we need to bond together i think that's like that's super important and then um just for us like just keeping that positivity through right. the community is huge and and not even you know it starts here with us in the dance community and it spreads it spreads like you know whether they're going from a dance class to their soccer match or whatever it may be uh, you know, like it just, I don't want to say reinforce, yeah, reinforcing, just reinforcing the positivity and, you know, going through obviously a pandemic, that's, that's, that's hard. It's hard for everybody, but, um, staying, there is a way, there's a great way to stay positive and it's, um, it can kind of build from there. And we I guess. can adapt. I think the kids know, should know that we can adapt to any situation and they can adapt to any situation because they did it. Yeah. Uh, it's not impossible, it's different, it's hard, it might be easier or more fun or less, but we can do it. So if you can bring that positivity and that like good energy and make them wanna come back the next week, I think that's, I think that's, a, that's a key component. Yeah. Um, some, we, we had a teacher one morning, she was like, hey, do you mind if I don't teach this morning and I just have breakfast with the kids? And we call that breakfast um, with Miss Krista. And we're like, okay, why not? Mm -hmm. And we sent out an email and suddenly she has like 45 kids and they just all sat there with their ball and like talking about life and, you know, and I think that was great to know, for the kids to know that they can bond with their teacher and they, we are here for them, mm -hmm. even through a screen. 
you right. know, and, and same with parents, you know, if you, if, if same with the community, you know, like if so many people on, on I'm going to take the more than just green dancing website, like, you know, you have that question like, oh my gosh, are, are we doing Zoom? And so that you have like five, four numbers, like call me, send me, and people take 20 minutes of their time being in a pandemic, trying to figure out the business to help each other. Like, that's, that's fantastic. It's awesome. Just think about it. That's yeah. fantastic. Like people help you and, and uh, it's great. And we, we, we hope we hope in the future we can be able to help people and any, anybody needs help, send a private message. If we can help, we help. If we yeah. don't know, we like, we send you to somebody else. So that is, and that is uh, you guys, your timing is fantastic. You said such, such, uh -huh. so in sync because that is, um, uh, would be the last thing that I would ask is how can, um, listeners and, uh, and, and other studio owners, uh, get in touch with you. So, um, uh, maybe give the, um, the information for the studio, give the information for the network and then, um, how, uh, both of you guys names, uh, if you would like for them to private message you, um, so that they have uh, that as a reference. How yeah. can I, think, I think through the, the new dance teacher network, I think is yep. the best way. Um, our studio is Fusion Dance Solana Beach and I'm an Anthony at Fusion Dance Solana Beach and it's Justin at Fusion Dance Solana Beach dot com. So, yeah, through social yeah. media, social um, media is good. Facebook, I, Justin Kwan, I, we've had um, a lot of, of owners and teachers uh, added me through through the network and, I, and I'm always happy to, you know, kind of keep that ball rolling and like in sharing ideas. And it's been great because some people have messaged me about things and just um, always being super respectful and be like, hey, can I post this in the group? And, you know, um, but yeah, just re people reach want to out. Be part of something, which is also good. You yeah. know, they want to be part of that. Yeah. So. so just yeah, reach out to us anytime on any of those social media platforms. We're, We're happy, to help. happy to help. And yeah, that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for being part. Until next week, I'm Mr. Richard, and this is Real Talk, sponsored by 360 Dance Festival. Mm -hmm.